the 678.9-meter-tall Radica 118 skyscraper, designed by Australian studio Fender Katsalidis, took first place in Malaysia, becoming the second tallest building in the world. Located in the center of Kuala Lumpur, the 118-story skyscraper has reached its full height after the completion of the pointed spire. Fender Katsalidis began construction of Merdeka 118 in 2016 on a site overlooking Merdeka Stadium, a historically significant site built for Malaysia's Declaration of Independence in 1957. The construction of the skyscraper is almost completed. The 678.9-meter-tall skyscraper is classified by the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat as a megatall, a building over 600 meters high. It has a faceted facade of triangular glass planes. Inside, the building covers more than 288,000 square meters and contains 158,000 square meters of office space available for rent. In addition to offices, this ultra-tall skyscraper will also feature various hotel, retail, and residential facilities to become one of the main tourist destinations. Las Vegas is visited by about 42 million tourists a year. But in order to keep this flow, companies have to constantly create new attractions. One of them will be MSG Sphere, the largest spherical building in the world. It is an ambitious project with a budget of almost $2 billion, created using a variety of technical solutions. The spherical building has a height of 112 meters and a width of 157 meters. Outside MSG Sphere LED screen covers a total area of 54,000 square meters, capable of displaying content that is clearly visible at a distance of several kilometers. Inside there is a hall for 17,500 seats and a number of other rooms. The installation of the Sphere's steel body was completed in mid-2021. Now the next step is the creation of an external LED screen. MSD Entertainment is confident that the construction will be completed this year. Denmark will build two new energy islands in the North and Baltic Seas, which will be able to provide wind energy and in the future green hydrogen to several countries. Artificial Island will be located in the North Sea, 100 kilometers from the mainland of Denmark. The authors noted that it will have the potential to supply electricity to the Netherlands, the UK and Belgium, which was not possible before. The island will initially supply 3 gigawatts of electricity and then 10 gigawatts. This will allow energy to be transmitted over much longer distances. The creators noted that the construction of the island will cost about 28 billion euros. It consists of a central hub of steel, concrete and sand that will be surrounded by a series of platforms and wind turbines. Most likely, the island will also have accommodation for short-stay workers. Energy islands could produce green hydrogen for heavy industry, aviation and shipping. This is especially relevant for the island of Bornholm, through which about 60,000 ships pass each year. In addition, hydrogen can be transported through pipelines on the seabed. Construction of the Guangzhou Evergrande Football Stadium began in April 2020 at an estimated cost of $1.86 billion. The new project will resemble a lotus flower, which is symbolic, because Guangzhou is popularly called the Flower City. All work on the 100,000-capacity project ceased in August 2021 as the city struggled to meet payments on more than $300 billion in debt. The developers ceded control to the authorities, who planned to sell the stadium or, in the absence of buyers, purchase it through the Guangzhou City Construction Investment Group. But one way or another, as the Chinese authorities say, the stadium will be completed in any case. Only no one knows for sure when the construction will be completed. On September 7, 2017, Amazon announced plans to build a new Amazon HQ2 headquarters that will employ tens of thousands of people. The same amount Apple spent on the creation of a new headquarters in the form of a spaceship in Cupertino. According to the founder of Amazon and billionaire Jeff Bezos, the new headquarters will be comparable with the existing one in Seattle. It occupies 33 buildings with a total area of about 752.5 thousand square meters. More than 40,000 people work there. Amazon estimates that having its headquarters in Seattle saved the city about $38 billion between 2010 and 2016. The centerpiece of the complex will be a 100-meter tower called Helix, which visually resembles a shell. The green gardens will contain workspaces for the company's employees. Amazon has been working on the design of the new headquarters for three years. Construction work is already underway by the beginning of February 2021. 
According to Amazon, everyone will be able to visit the Helix Tower for two weekends a month. Public spaces of 10,000 square meters will be created on the territory of the complex. However, on March 3, 2023, Amazon announced the suspension of construction of its second headquarters. The decision came after the corporation and other major tech employers made their most significant layoffs since at least 2013. In Egypt, the tallest skyscraper on the continent is being built. With a total height of 385.8 meters, it is already the tallest building in Africa. It is noteworthy that the construction is being carried out by a Chinese company. Iconic Tower is under construction at New Administrative Capital. According to the project, the building will have 80 floors. Most of the area will be given for office needs. Panoramic photos show that this skyscraper will be the largest among 20 other skyscrapers located nearby. This architectural ensemble will represent the center of the business district of the new administrative capital. The total area of the building exceeds 65,000 square meters. Construction of Iconic Tower officially began in May 2018. Egyptian Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli visited the construction site to take part in a ceremony marking the start of foundation pouring in 2019. The main contractor for the project is China State Construction Engineering. The iconic tower skyscraper was planned and inspired by the shape of the obelisk of the pharaohs, as well as the shape of the crown of the Egyptian god Ra. In July 2021, all structural concrete work on the tower was completed, and the tower reached its full height of 385 meters on August 24, 2021. The tower is expected to be fully completed as early as this year. The Hinkley Point C nuclear power station will be the first nuclear power plant in the UK to be built in over 20 years, since Sizewell B was commissioned in 1995. The nuclear power station will be built next to the existing Hinkley Point A and B power plants. Construction is being carried out by the Nuclear New Build Generation Company, a British subsidiary of the French state-owned EDF, with the investment in the project provided by the second project participant, the Chinese state-owned power company CGM. The participation of the Chinese company was approved by Theresa May's government back in September 2016. The new nuclear power station will provide up to 7% of the UK's electricity needs. The cost of the project is currently £32.7 billion, $40 billion. The commissioning of the first unit should take place this year. Over the past couple of decades, China has built hundreds of bridges, not only within the country, but also on the territory of other states. Many of the projects deserve special attention, because often during their implementation specialists from the Celestial Empire set another record. This also applies to the construction of the 6.15-kilometer Padma Bridge across the river, which according to the latest indicator, has become the longest among similar facilities in the ganges brahmaputra Meghna River basins. In addition, the project is recognized as the most complex in the history of Bangladesh in the field of construction. As for the world record, it is associated with the sinking of the piles to a depth of 125.46 meters, a new absolute indicator in the construction of bridges. China Railway Group offered its bridge construction services. The Chinese company was ready not only to build the facility, but also to act as a creditor. The authorities of Bangladesh, not wanting to get into a debt trap from Beijing, decided to limit itself to a contract worth nearly $4 billion and finance the construction from the state treasury. Such a move was heavily criticized by some economists in the opposition. Nevertheless, the construction was completed, and for Bangladesh, the bridge became a new symbol, and for China, another successfully implemented project abroad. Write in the comments which of these projects you like the most. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the Karo Show channel. Also, check out our previous videos. Goodbye.